This is the Guns Magazine podcast, episode number nine. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting people who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. In today's episode, I chat with Linda Powell, Director of Media Relations for historical O.F. Mossberg & Sons, a leading U.S. firearms manufacturer best known for their shotguns, but they also make great rifles and handguns. Linda's one of the best and the brightest in the firearms industry, but somebody who, frankly, not many people outside the gun business have even heard of. However, that's their loss, because not only is Linda great at what she does for Mossberg, she's a fantastic ambassador for the sport of hunting and an incredible role model for women in the outdoors. Linda didn't start out as a hunter or even come from an outdoor family. After her short career in the medical field, she changed directions and joined Remington Arms, where she learned to hunt as part of her job. Moving to Mossberg, she not only continued to be a popular and respected member of the shooting industry, she continued hunting and is now one of the most experienced hunters of any gender on North American game. Our conversation with Linda is both enlightening and inspiring as she talks about family-owned Mossberg, how being a late bloomer in the hunting field increases her appreciation for the sport, and her own experiences as a single parent teaching her son how to be an ethical hunter. Linda is almost fanatical about black bear hunting, and during our interview, she talks about her latest hunt where she swam through a wintertime swamp to find a bear. That turns both insightful and fun. Our talk with Linda went by too quickly, and I think you'll agree. Now here's my chat with Linda Powell. Well, we are talking to Linda Powell. Linda, thank you for joining us here at the Guns Magazine podcast. It's a pleasure to be here today, Brent. You know, you are one of the most experienced people, uh, marketing folks in the entire business. You work for Mossberg and you are an incredible hunter. You've hunted all over the globe and and you've got a lot of cool stories. So we are happy you could join us. Well, I appreciate the kind words and listening to all that, though, it makes it sound like I'm old (laughs) 29 right and plus one or two (laughs) well give me a a quick biography how basically you got to this point sure well and and my story is kind of very non-typical I did not grow up hunting and shooting Uh, pretty traditional middle class family I wasn't even much of an outdoorsman in fact my family kind of laughs now. They're not sure what happened to me. <laughs> but uh, kind of midlife, I, I had gone into nursing in the medical field and worked in that for 14 years, but never was really happy with that. Yeah, It was a job, but not my passion. And so midlife, I had the opportunity to go to work for a company that brought their worldwide corporate headquarters about 20 miles north of where I've lived. And that happened to be the Remington Arms Company. Uh-huh. And I was hired as an administrative assistant going in. Uh, it was a little overwhelming because I replaced a lady who had been there 20 years. Yeah. She knew everyone in the industry. They knew her. Um, on top of that, I didn't even know the difference between a rifle and a shotgun when I started. I'd never <laughs> shot anything other than a BB gun. Huh. So I, I laugh and tell people the first probably six months, every night on the drive home, I was like, I'm never going to get this. <laughs> you know, it was just like learning a foreign language. There was so much to wrap my arms around. But after about that six to nine month period, it began to make a little sense. And the guys in the office were great. They said, you know, your job, at the time I was hired as the administrative assistant, your job is an office job. But if you want to learn to shoot, we'll be happy to teach you. I'm like, great. You know, if I'm working for a gun company, obviously I want to learn to shoot. <laughs> so a little bit of time at the range. And then they said, uh, would you like to go to the shooting school? At the time, uh, Remington did have a three-day shotgun school. So I took that, and I jumped into a Becoming an Outdoor Woman program. Yeah. So, I mean, that was my education. And then the next question the guys asked me, uh, would you like to try hunting? And I said, sure, why not? Uh, you know, fortunately, I did have the, the biology background. I understand wildlife management. But I never really had thought about hunting one way or the other. But uh, I was I was prepared because I'd done my education, read a lot. And the guys set me up for my first hunt, which I now know was not typical. Ah. Um, my first hunt was a bear hunt <laughs> with a muzzleloader. 
Well, might as well jump into the pool with both <laughs> feet, right, in the deep end. You know, I, I laugh looking back now that I have a little more experience. I'm like, did they set me up for failure? Is that what they were trying to do? So, so your first hunt was a bear hunt with a muzzleloader. That's correct. And I, I didn't know that's not how everybody started. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say it was an incredible experience. Um, last day of the hunt, I still had not even seen a bear. Yeah. But I had pushed myself to do a lot of things I never even imagined myself doing. Last bit of light of the last day, I'm kind of just reflecting, probably daydreaming. And I happen to glance up and there's a bear standing out in front of me. Wow. And after I got over several cases of bringing the gun up and not being able to take the shot because of the nerves, I shot the bear. And I remember climbing down out of the stand, walking over to it. And the first thought that came to my mind was, I'm a hunter and my life has changed. Wow. But little did I know what that really meant at that moment. Hmm. Pretty powerful moment. Oh, incredible. And, you know, sometimes I look back and regret that I didn't grow up hunting and shooting. Yeah. And didn't have all those experiences, you know, going on small game hunts, maybe with my father or other family members. But because I started later in life, I think I've been even more passionate about it because I feel like I'm behind the game. I've got to try everything and catch up. up. Yeah, make up for lost time. Well, that's cool. I've never heard that story, but that explains why everybody knows when they say Linda, well, she's a big time bear hunter. And and you always do have the story of your latest hunt, which just seems like was yesterday. So you you did tell me recently you had to swim through a swamp or something. I, I did, actually. I was hunting in eastern North Carolina. And if you don't know, some of the biggest bears in the country are there because they don't hibernate and there's lots of crops. So there's also a lot of canals and swamps and that sort of thing. So we were hunting with dogs. And actually, the dogs went across the canal. On, they were on a bear. And my guy looked at me and he's like, do you want to go after this bear? And I'm like, well, of course I do. And he says, <laughs> well, the only way for us to get over there is to swim across this canal. So I'm like, let's do it. Now, it's also December, <laughs> but it is North Carolina, but still it was it's cold. It's December. <laughs> yeah. So we made it across the canal. We spent hours. I mean, it's thick. It's viney. A lot of it was on our hands and knees. Wow. We never actually caught up with the dogs because they never treated the bear and we were losing light. So the God said, I hate to do this to you, but we're going to have to call it a day and work our way back. And by this time, everybody else that had been hunting were kind of waiting for us on the other side of the canal. And as we came across, I, um, my guide said, here, I'll take your rifle for you. And I thought, well, this will be fun. I'll just swim across, do a little backstroke, that sort of thing. <laughs> make, make fun. And everybody's cheering. You know, I get over to the other side and my guide starts across and all of a sudden we could tell he's kind of struggling. Oh no. And he actually goes down. Oh. And he, he pops up and we're saying, are you okay? You okay? And he, he didn't really respond. He goes down a second time. So now we're kind of looking at each other like, you know, we've got somebody in distress here. We've got to do something. He got us down a third time. And again, remember the water's cold and we're thinking it's not really smart for somebody. But he he comes up and he's able to kind of get back over to the other bank. But we'd been out so long, no water or anything, and he cramped up. Oh. And he couldn't get back across. So, but this is what's interesting. He's yelling across, you know, once he's okay, we know he's okay but I dropped your rifle and I'm like, (laughs) I don't care about my rifle, you know, at that point, but we ended up getting ropes and somebody went over and swam and got them back across. But what's really cool is a couple of the guys went in and dove down and recovered my rifle too. Really? Wow. And so we cleaned it up. The next day we go out, we get on a bear, tree it. And I was able to, to take that bear. No kidding. (laughs) <laughs> and you'd almost warmed up by then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you've, you've even hunted, uh, I guess uh, you've hunted mux, muskox. I have muskox up in the Arctic Circle. What was that like? Uh, another interesting adventure. You know, I chose to go in the fall. A lot of people do it in the spring when in the snow. I do have a little common sense. <laughs> I decided to go when at least it was moderate temperatures. It was incredible because we actually went with families of Inuits. Oh, wow. So we had everybody from grandma and grandpa all the way down to little young kids. And they're actually hunting, obviously, for sustenance, you know. So, you know, we were hunting caribou, the muskox, fishing. And as we brought the animals back, they're preparing the meat for the winter. And they're also preparing the hides. And, you know, it gives you a real appreciation for 
the importance of hunting and fishing. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it is their means of of life. Yep. But also learning the cultures. I mean, they um, they would spear fish. Uh, you know, they showed us how they made the jerky. You know, just pretty much hanging it on the line to yeah. dry. But uh, you know, just an incredible experience. And again putting ourselves in some situations we were in the open water and little bitty john boats pretty much with some rough seas so there have been a few times on these hunting adventures that i've said quite a few prayers and <laughs> I hope i make it another day yeah. <laughs> what what are some of your other I, I have i've heard all kinds of different things what are some of the other more memorable hunts you've been on well, I mean, obviously, first hunt for me, memorable. First backcountry kind of hunt, we're a horseback in tents. But, you know, the one that comes to mind that means the most to me is taking my son, ah. a single parent. And when I started working in the industry, he was around 11, really no interest in it. But as I continued to hunt and bring home wild game, he really loved eating the meat. And I think when he was about 14, we'd had wild turkey that night. And he said, I think I want to go on a turkey hunt. So I said, no problem, but if you're serious about this, you know, first thing is safety. We've got to learn to shoot. You've got to show me that you're serious about it. So we spent our time at the range. He'd already taken hunter safety. Right. Uh, he did that when I went to work uh, for Remington since I knew we were going to have guns in the house. But we went out west for a turkey hunt. And as a single mom with a 14-year-old son, I don't know anything else that I could do with him that would not be embarrassing or not cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's face it. No teenager really wants to spend right. time with their that's, parents. That's kind of their job. Right. But for us, it was an incredible experience because we bonded over this. Like, I, again, I don't know anything else that would yeah. have created the opportunity for us. It was not an easy hunt. We, we were in the Black Hills of South Dakota, up and down elevation. And, you know, like day three of the hunt, he's like, I, you know, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Really? You know, it, it would been it been a tough hunt, and we got lucky that afternoon. Three longbeards came in, and he shot one. And I can still remember. I mean, for me, I was so cool when it happened, but then I walked away and I kind of lost it <laughs> because I realized just what had happened between the two of us. He now was going to become a hunter too. Oh, very cool. And he's a few years older now, like in his thirties. And you know, he says to me that. Thank goodness I introduced him to hunting because there wasn't anybody else in the family to do that. I mean, he's not passionate about hunting, but he loves shooting. Yeah. So he's more into the shooting sports. What do you say to, uh, you know, women in, in your situation? Because there's a uh, there's a an invisible barrier uh, keeping them from walking into the gun shop or walking into the uh, sporting goods store and, and buying the gear to go do this. And then they don't even know where to start from there. Unfortunately, the male of the species, there's a few that don't don't seem to embrace that and can be a problem. How, how do you uh, bring ladies like that along and get them into the sport? Well, I think the best way to do that is to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I think as a woman, you can relate and connect more to women. So if there's not a program, again, become an outdoor woman. I know NWTF has some programs. A lot of local ranges now have, you know, ladies night only. Right. If you can reach out, maybe networking even online to find women's groups, uh, I think that's one of the best ways to start. Um, whether it be learning to just your basic gun safety and learning to shoot. When it comes to hunting, it's almost where you have to have a one-on-one -on -one type mentorship. Right. I think that's what we should all be doing as hunters and shooters is welcoming other people into our sport and taking the time to help to introduce them. And it's just, it's even beyond just that first time at the range. It's giving them other opportunities because I think one of the things that I found most overwhelming is, okay, I've been introduced to the sport, but now what next? And not knowing how to take the next steps. So don't be afraid to ask if you know somebody that's a hunter or a shooter, you know, ask them to take you to the range or ask them if they'd be willing to take you hunting. Because I think most of us are receptive to that. Yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, we were teaching a ladies only class. And there was some older guys that were teaching a, another shooting program that we were using the range right after them. And we ended up uh, complaining to the people that owned the range because they literally stood there and, well, look at that little girl there and, and you know, look at her. And, and these ladies were really nervous to start with because some of them never had even shot a gun before. And to hear guys do that, I, I can't even begin to understand why they think that would be okay. 
And all I could think was, what if your daughter or your wife was standing there and I was saying that to her? They wouldn't like that at all. So, you know, it, it's unfortunate. But, you know, to be honest, there's there's still some of that out there and, and it drives me crazy. But uh, I think it's great that uh, so many uh, organizations now are, are trying to embrace women and, and people that don't normally you don't normally consider. It's typically old white guys that go hunting, you know. Right. But uh, I, I think that's great that you're a great example of, of a female that you doesn't matter your gender doesn't matter you're just a hell of a hunter <laughs> you know that's what i tell people you know i think we need to stop saying you know female hunter or male yeah. hunter we're all hunters we're all shooters exactly it doesn't really matter so just embrace everyone that's interested in becoming involved yep so you you hunt all these different species is, is bear number one for oh, you? oh absolutely <laughs> So what's in number two? You know, that's a tough one. I mean, I love going out west, and maybe that's because it's New it's World. For, yeah, <laughs> but uh, elk, I really love mule deer. Turkey hunting is very addictive. I've, yeah. I've been kind of eaten up with that and worked on World Slam. And, um, it's, it's addictive. It, it is. I can honestly say I haven't found anything yet that I don't like. Wow. You know, I enjoyed bird hunting because of the social aspect and, and yeah. watching the dogs work and Again, you know, I try to look at it. Every experience is new and unique, and why not go out and try it? Maybe it won't be your favorite, but at least give it a try. Well, getting into your your current job, you work for Mossberg. I do. And that's how we met. And uh, talk about having a job of your dreams. Um, you, you go to all these hunts. You go to writers' events. What's, what's a typical month for, <laughs> uh, for Linda Powell like? Well, let's you know, just give you an idea of the month coming up. Uh, we're talking about, all right, we're at Gunsight now for a week. I, I will be home next week. But then following that, I'm heading to Kansas for a whitetail hunt, uh, home for a couple of days, and then Maine for a sea duck hunt, eastern North Carolina for a duck hunt, and then Mexico for a coos deer hunt. Wow. Oh, and then, yeah, I think it's SHOT Show. Uh -oh. <laughs> of all your hunting trophies, now, do you have like a uh, the big taxidermy wall or? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, here's the problem, I think, with starting later in life hunting, too. A part of my thought process is I need to honor every animal that I take. Sure. Thinking that I wouldn't do that many hunts, you know. <laughs> so I started out mounting my first of everything. And then I realized very quickly that was not going to work. My house, every room except the bathrooms have mounts in them. Really? My garage has mounts in them. <laughs> Some of my mounts are at my neighbors. Some are at my parents. <laughs> Some, unfortunately, I've had to pass along. So I'm at that stage as a hunter now that as much as I admire an animal and would love to mount it and take it home, I seriously don't have any place else to put yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, is there one in particular, any mount because of the hunt, the story, the animal, anyone that is like front and center? Boy, that's a tough one because... I love having them in my in my house, you know, because every time I look at them, I do recall yeah. the hunt or something about them. And I think, honestly, my favorite has kind of changed because obviously, as I've added more experiences, my perspective has changed. I mean, bears still are probably number one, and there are a lot of those around. <laughs> uh, in fact, people have laughed that I could probably carpet the house with bear rugs <laughs> i was wondering that i was wondering you know but I, i've also what i've done is I, you know when people admire them i've given several away so uh -huh. you know that's kind of nice to be able to do that as well yeah so let's let's shift gears and talk about mossberg yeah <laughs> how long have you worked at mossberg been at mossberg now for this is my ninth year we're like we said, we're at a writer's event. And uh, one of the guys came up with what I think is a good uh, synopsis of what Mossberg is. And I hope I hope I don't say this and you bristle up and go, don't, don't, don't say that. But he said Mossberg is a great blue collar gun. Nothing super fancy, you know, not uh, esoteric, not super high price points, just a good, honest, uh, reliable value gun. Uh, that's perfect. You nailed it. You know what I tell people? The reason I love Mossberg so much is it's still family owned and operated. Yeah. And the family from the very beginning believed that every man, woman, child should be able to enjoy the hunting and shooting sports. And to do so, they should be able to have the highest quality equipment possible at a price they could afford. Yeah. And they've continued that throughout the companies. I mean, we're 100 years old this year. 
throughout the company's history. And it really makes me proud to work for the company, knowing that they want to be the every man's gun. Yeah. Um, that's not to say, however, sometimes people mistake us for not being innovative. We are truly one of the most innovative companies in the industry. You know, sometimes we're not given credit for some of the things that we've come up with. You know, the three and a half inch shotgun was a Mossberg 12 gauge. Yeah. Was a Mossberg design. You know, I, gun locks, the cable lock, Mossberg design. Didn't know that. The cantilever uh, shotgun, Mossberg mm-hmm. design. And even come to today, uh, our recent flex system on the shotgun and rifle where you can switch out stocks and four ends and recoil pads without any tools. You know, again, a very innovative design. So I tell people that, you know, when you look at price, that doesn't necessarily mean cheap. Right. And cheap in value or design. What it means is we use the high standard of manufacturing to mass produce so we can make it affordable. Yeah. You know, it's no secret. The gun industry is is kind of facing a little bit of pressure. Our demand is probably where it should have been, but it was so overinflated during the, the Obama administration. What? How do you guys see it? Well, I think you said it there, but, you know, what drives the industry is always new products. Mm-hmm. So as a company, you know, we are constantly looking at marketing research to see which are the largest growing markets. Um, you know, this year we introduced our first handgun in almost 100 years. Yep. We got back into that market, the concealed carry. The MC1. The MC1SC, because we looked at it and, it, you know, it showed largest growing market, told us nine millimeter was the most popular. You know, we looked at all of those and we spent about three years in development you know, bringing that to the market. Mm -hmm. So that's a real challenge for us. I mean, we're always trying to figure out what's next, but we're also a very diverse company. You know, when you say Mossberg, everybody goes, Oh, the shotgun company. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. We're very proud (laughs) of that. But you look at our catalog or our website, we have everything from rim fires to ARs, you know, bolt action rifles that look like a piece of artwork. Honestly, our Patriot Revere, you know, pump action, semi-auto shotguns, break actions. So, I mean, there's really not a category that we're not in now. Yeah. You guys brought out your first handgun. Um, what do you guys see, if, if you're not giving away trade secrets here, <laughs> what do you see as the big growth drivers in the next year or two? Well, I, I don't think the handgun market's going to slow down any. I think there's still uh, in lots of opportunity for growth there because we see that in, you know, uh, concealed carry market continues to grow. First time shooters, most of them look like they're getting guns for personal defense. Right. Um, competition shooting, you know, still is pretty strong. You know, hunting market's a little soft, but again, uh, I think, you know, you just stay the course and keep bringing out innovative products. Well, last time we were together was at famed Thunder Ranch using the uh, the 590 and the 930. Correct. Um, the, the Thunder Ranch models, which was really cool. And uh, I'm in the process of writing the story, but it was amazing to me because as an old cop, I'm an 870 guy. And, you know, I, I never really, uh, because our agency issued 870s and everybody around us, you know, used 870s. So that was really the first time I got uh, a real in-depth uh, trigger time on uh, the uh, the 590, and I was really impressed. The uh, ergonomics, uh, even you know where the safety is, and and they ran like champions. Well, you look at it, you know the 500 platform, 500, 590, and 590 A1. We've been producing well over 50 years now, more than 12 million in production, and the military, all five branches have used them for over 30 years. So. You can't go wrong with a pump action, and the, the 500 is just the proven platform. Well, it it, it really impressed me, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to whatever the, the next iteration will be. I'll put you on the spot, though, uh, of of the entire product line. Do you have one favorite gun? Ooh. I know it's like well, picking which of your children know, is your favorite. I know, and I love all my children. <laughs> you know, I guess... <sighs> Can I pick two? Sure, sure. (laughs) Well, I love the MC1. Mm -hmm. I'm a a newer handgun shooter, but I had purchased a number of handguns before Mossberg got into them again. And my my struggle was finding one that really fit my hand comfortably that I could shoot. And also being able to rack it. And as soon as I picked it up, I've got it. Okay, I found my handgun. (laughs) But then I'm a big game hunter. Yeah. 
So I love our Patriot bolt action rifle and in particular Revere because it has the classic look with the European walnut stock and, you know, rosewood tips. And it's just a it's just a solid classic rifle. And, uh, you know, I jump back and forth. I'm trying out all the six five calibers now. I've done the Creedmoor. Yeah. I've got the PRC now. Um, but I'm, I'm always kind of waiting to see what's next and wanting to try that too. What a terrible problem to have. You just get to sample it all. I know, you know, the problem is, you know, I do get the luxury of using any of them that I want to, but the problem is I want to purchase them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the same problem as a, as a magazine editor. So now, you know, going back to the hunting aspect though, what haven't you hunted? Well, that, you're, sticking, that you want to, I'm right. sure, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sticking with the bear theme. I mean, my bucket list dream would be a polar bear hunt. You know, I haven't done that. Probably won't get to. But, you know, it's always good to have that on the list. Um, beyond that, you know, I'm um, really excited. Next year, I've got the opportunity to do. I like some international hunts. I haven't done a lot of those. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be going to uh, New Caledonia for Rusa Stag. Wow. So a part of the world I've never been to. And so, again, that's the part of hunting, whether it's in your backyard or the next state or across the country. You know, it's just going to experience the culture, um, seeing wildlife you haven't seen before. Yeah. And maybe hopefully bring in a trophy home. <laughs> Will you find a place for that one? <sighs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Any top secret things coming up that we might be seeing? A new oh, ray goodness. gun or <laughs> flamethrower or anything? Well, we did mention SHOT Show, and I would tell everybody to stay tuned because we actually have a couple of two, two exciting new products. Yeah. And different platforms. Yes. So. Well, uh, that was kind of a setup deal because <laughs> that's what we've been doing here. And uh, I, I will say it's been really cool that you brought in uh, a lot of your folks and your engineers. Yes. And these guns are ready to go, but they wanted to run them through our uh, uh, dirty paws and uh, really put them to the test here at Gunsight, uh, you know, basically abusing them as hard as we could. And and Lord knows uh, the weather we've had the last couple of days. It was not sunny and 70 here in Arizona. And uh, they that was the final thing we did, uh, sat down at the whiteboard and discussed malfunctions, any any problems that anybody had. And they they're taking those back to make those changes, to make the guns right before before they get out. Absolutely. That's one of the things we're sometimes I say we're a conservative company. And when I say that, I mean, we're very careful about before we launch a product and particularly a new platform that we've done all the testing we possibly can. We've put it in the hands of a lot of different shooters and we want to make sure that it's right so that when you go out and purchase that gun, you know that you've got Mossberg behind it and uh, it's going to last you a lifetime. Yeah. A great blue collar gun. That's right. <laughs> well, how can folks find out more about Mossberg? Go to our website at Mossberg.com. Great. Do you guys do social media and all that stuff? Oh, too? sure. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Do you, do you post on social so they can follow your hunts? Uh I do, but I keep that private. Oh, okay. 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 No, that makes sense. So, well, Linda Powell from Mossberg, it's been great talking to you. It's been actually great being here for the last four days, playing with some double top secret stuff that will come out soon. So uh, we appreciate you being on the Guns Magazine podcast. And one of these days, maybe we'll go hunt something together. Sounds like a great idea. Thank you. It was great talking to our friend Linda Powell, Director of Media Relations for Mossberg, and I'm hoping to join her one of these days on a hunt. With that, we hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Please tell all your friends, even the liberals. Guns Magazine is number one in the business, and we're using our decades of friendships to bring you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you have questions, comments, or a guest you'd like to recommend for the show, please email me at editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you don't miss out on anything by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast directory and YouTube. Of course, you can always listen and download our episodes at GunsMagazine.com. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out our sister publication, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast for the entire crew at FMG Publications. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting.